started. I'm, we're, we're streaming this live right now, so I'm live on Facebook, so we're, going to, we're doing a live streaming thing. So I just want to welcome all you guys on uh, my, my, my Facebook page. We have such a treat. We've been actually doing some kind of intimate talking this morning, but now John's going to do an awesome presentation on uh, online marketing and business and how to make the most out of your messaging for your business. He is amazing. The awesome John LeBacher. Everybody give him a hand. You guys want an actual presentation now? Is that it? <laughs> Make it work? <laughs> Are we coming through with the sound? No. All right, awesome. So, you know, we talked a little bit earlier. We kind of breezed through the, the whole recipe thing, why you need recipes in your business to make everything come out predictable. So I'm just going to kind of go a little bit more on that and show some of the recipes that we actually use, which are, are pretty cool. So here I talk about, you know, success leaves footprints. Yeah, I know you've heard Tony Robbins say that. Uh, he talks about the footprints in the sand and, and all that good stuff. Uh, the footprints represent recipes. So I talked about McDonald's before, you know, how they get that predictability. Those recipes really are formulas. Formulas are what we typically refer to in business. You know, if we're cooking stuff, it's recipes. If it's business, it's formulas. But it's the same meaning. And what you want a recipe or a formula for is that predictable outcome. If you have that in your business, you know, like Anthony said earlier, if you have a traffic source that you're sending to something that you know converts and you've got something you know for every dollar you put in, you get a dollar fifty back, you know, that's a formula. So with that formula, you know, if I want to make X amount of dollars per month, I know how much ad spend I need to drive that. So that's really cool. When you can have that kind of predictability in your business, you really have control, not only of your business, but of your life. And that, I think, is what we're all in business for. Right? Nobody got in business because they wanted to work really hard and not make any money, right? <laughs> We've probably all done that at a job. Or, you know, some of them, I, I have. <laughs> I know a lot of people have, and that's typically why they try and get out of the jobs, is to get that freedom. The only way you're ever going to get to freedom in your life is typically through a business. I don't know too many jobs that really offer freedom. It's all done through business. And the only way you're going to get a business that will afford you the freedom is if you can get predictability in your business, and you can actually drive it and scale it. So that's what we're going to talk about. So imagine if you had a recipe book for everything that you needed to scale your business, just like ad agencies. Now I talked a little bit this morning about how ad agencies are what makes predictability for most big businesses. They lean on the ad agencies to figure it out for them. You know, they have fabulous products, but they know to sell them. They need to figure out how to market them and bring them into the marketplace. So they go to ad agencies and they lean on them to do that for them. The ad agencies really are creating formulas. They've got formulas and they're implementing those formulas in every business to create the messaging. You know, it's, it's those three things in any business that is going to get that for you. I've put those three things into what I call the ACT marketing protocol actually made a whole system around it and I have simplified it into this three-step system that is a lot of you are already in the program you know it's just it's three very large encompassing steps <laughs> there's a lot of little sub steps in each one but it's absolutely critical that you follow the three steps in order and it is exactly the way ad agencies do it I've never seen an ad agency go outside of this order. And if they did, they would probably fail. Every business, or, or not every business, but most businesses that don't have <clears throat> the deep pockets and don't have the ability to go to an ad agency and they try and do it themselves, that's where you've seen these figures of, you know, 96% of businesses fail. That's why. They don't follow the formula. They don't have predictability. So what they get is they get failure. I see over and over and over people will jump into creating websites 
before they figured out their marketing message. And guess what you're going to get? You're going to get a website that doesn't convert because you haven't identified your ideal customers. You haven't done the pre-work before you jumped into creation. So you are setting yourself up to fail. I see people that, that do that. They forget the analysis altogether. They jump into creation and then they, they think, I got a website. Traffic will solve all my problems. And it won't. I said that this morning. Traffic doesn't solve problems. Traffic only magnifies whatever is existing. So if you've got problems in conversion, more traffic is just going to magnify that. It's going to flush that money down that little bowl that we talked about this morning. <laughs> so, and, and that's not, you know, you don't want to flush your money down the toilet. Nobody wants to do that. And when you create a website before you've got a marketing message correct, that's exactly what you're doing. When you drive traffic to a website that doesn't convert, that's what you're doing. You're wasting money. So that's why I created this program. I had a lot of people coming to me wanting to buy traffic because my company has done search engine optimization for over 20 years. We've driven traffic mainly to big companies that have ad agencies. So the traffic worked. It made them millions of dollars. And in the first 10 years, I actually kept track of what my clients were making online. And I stopped counting at 100 million. When I created $100 million in online sales, I was satisfied that I knew what I was doing and I could stop counting. And that was well over a decade ago that I stopped counting. And these customers, the reason that the traffic made them the money was because they had conversion. They had figured it out. They had ad agencies that were building their websites and making their offers. So to me, that was a dream come true. I come in, I do my thing, I drive the traffic, they make the sales, everybody's happy. But when I started working with smaller businesses, they didn't have it right. They couldn't convert. I would drive the traffic, they would get no sales. And that doesn't look good on me. As a traffic person selling something that doesn't work, I don't want to play in that arena. So I turned a lot of people away. And I'm sitting there looking at my business model thinking, I turned 90% of my potential customers away because I can't help them. I wasn't happy with that, and that's why I created this. I created a bridge <coughs> to get small business owners to the same place that an ad agency can take a huge business. So that's what this thing is all about. We call it the ACT Marketing Protocol. These are some of those customers I talked about that I've worked with over the last 20-something years, and you probably recognize a few of them. They typically make a decent amount of money on their advertising. <laughs> and they know how to convert. So when I talk about advertising, and I talk about these formulas and stuff, I always ask people, you know, who do you believe the father of American advertising is? And a lot of people will say David Ogilvy. I'm sure if you guys have done any research on advertising, you know who that is. You guys familiar with David Ogilvy? They made the, the TV series Mad Men was portraying him. And he's like the crazy guy back in the 50s that was doing these phenomenal ad campaigns that were just blowing up sales. And they all kind of relate to him. If you followed any of the big top online marketers or Dan Kennedy or you know any of those guys, they all relate a lot to what David Ogilvy laid down for them. He laid the foundation for what we all think was the, the start of American advertising, but he really wasn't the father of it. I've tracked it back to Benjamin Franklin. And I talked about that this morning, about how Benjamin Franklin, he used a formula to sell his wood-burning stove. And his formula was claim-proof benefit, because he realized people had beliefs about things, or they had beliefs that they didn't believe, or you know, they needed a particular belief to make a purchase, or to want to make a purchase. And for him to install a new belief that would create that, he did it through claim-proof benefit. And we kind of covered that, that earlier. I'll, I'll hit it again. That was back in 1741. So this stuff's been around for a while, and it works. It worked then, and it works now. 
So here's those three things. The three things in any ad component or anything, any ad campaign is going to need these three components. It's identifying your market. I call that segmentation. And I'm going to show you how to go and find out who your most profitable market is and by segmenting. And then once you've figured out who that is, and remember I said these steps have a lot of sub-steps, like analysis has a lot of little sub-steps, and the first piece of it is the segmentation, figuring out who's the most profitable, and then going into your avatar, discovering who your avatar is. So you do all of that so you can create the message. Remember I said if you don't do the analysis, if you skip into creation, you're going to get it wrong. How can you possibly create a message if you don't know who you're talking to? If you don't know what their desired outcome is. If you don't know why they want to buy something or why they wouldn't want to buy something. How would you possibly create an effective marketing campaign? You can't. Nor can you create an effective website if you don't have that first piece. you got to understand the market to create the message. Once the message is created, that's the thing that converts. It's understanding and how to communicate with that market is going to get you the conversion to make your sales. At that point, now you have a formula and then traffic comes in. That's where traffic is very valuable. And that is just arithmetic. That's where once we get your sales conversions, we can figure out those numbers and it becomes a math equation. It's literally, if you want to make X dollars a month, how many sales do we need to do that? And how much is it going to cost to drive those sales with traffic? It really becomes math and it puts you in a very powerful position. Because as a business owner, it puts you in, in an ability to scale. If this month you're making 10000 and next month you need to make 20000 because you need to pay some massive bill, a balloon payment or whatever, it gives you the ability to do that. Instead of going, oh my God, what's going to happen next month when I can't make that payment and I'm out of business? That's a very bad place to be in business. So this puts you in power. It gives you the power to make all the money you'd ever want. So that's what this system actually does. It gives you that ability. So let's talk about the segmentation. The first thing, very first step, very first piece of this. It all hinges upon getting this right. You all probably think that whatever you do and whatever you sell serves everyone that walks the planet. All you have to do is fog a mirror and I can sell them, right? A lot of us have that thought. Everybody needs it. And for a very long time, I thought that was not true. I thought, no, that's not true. But then I had somebody come to me and they say, well, everybody needs my product. And I said, really, what's your product? And he said, it's water. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> okay, I've, I've just got a new belief installed. Okay, I wasn't right there. Okay, everybody does need your product. But of all the people, let's segment all the people that would use your product and let's figure out who's the most profitable market that's consuming the water. And I came up with three right off the bat. I said, okay, there's three main pockets of people that are going to buy your water. One pocket is the people that are what we call green. They like to save the planet. They think, you know, they want to contribute, they want to pay back, they want to save the earth. If you package the water that way and you appeal to them and you create that message, they'll buy your water. That's a market to sell the water. Another market is the sports market for performance. Athletes that want to get a competitive edge, they want to run faster, jump higher, you know, be able to work out longer, whatever it is. If, if you can package the water to show that that's the desired outcome, then you'll have another market that will buy your water. Third market, last market, I know there's probably a million in between these three, but these are the three I identified. And I think it was the big ones. It's the health market. If you can package the water up to say that this water will deliver longevity, this will help you get through disease, reverse disease. If they believe that that water 
would help them live an extra day that they could be with the ones they love for an extra day and it would, that water would give them that, that's your most profitable market because that, it's the same water, we're selling it to three different markets, we're packaging it differently and we're positioning it differently, but if I say this bottle of water is $20, the green market, all of a sudden, is not going to care about the planet. We're not paying 20 bucks for a bottle of water, right? No matter how you slice it, they don't care that much. You know, if it doesn't cost them, they seem to care. But as soon as it does, they might change their mind. They're not going to pay 20 bucks for the water, right? Pretty, pretty much a no-brainer. The sports guys, maybe. You could probably sell it to them, but it would be a hard sell. But tell me this, if you thought that you would get an extra day of life if you bought the water for $20, I think you'd probably buy it. That's your profitable market. It's the ones that have the ability to pay and the willingness to pay for the desired outcome. So when you think about your business, who is that most profitable market? And we can kind of go around, we can spend a little bit of time here and. And you guys can kind of brainstorm and write down who are your possible markets for, for the main thing that you want to sell, the most profitable thing that you want to sell, and who are the markets that you might sell that to. And we can kind of brainstorm this a little bit and see if we can just off the cuff identify. You guys want to do that or do you want me to just kind of keep flowing through? I don't know how interactive you want me to get here. Some people are not on do anything, I just want to listen. <laughs> so I'm fine with either way. So show of hands, who wants a, a live exercise and who wants me to just keep keep talking? Live? And keep on rolling. <laughs> we'll give you a rest. What's that? We'll give you a rest. We'll do we'll do Okay. Yeah, hey, I'm here for whatever you guys want. So so do this for me. Identify what you think your you know your most profitable item is that you sell or service, and just write that down on the paper in front of you, and then try and come up with three potential markets that would be interested in that, and then uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. So at the top, just what your your most profitable thing that you sell, it might be a service, it might be a product, anything is fine. And then who you think, what markets you think would purchase that. And then whoever's got that first, just kind of raise your hand and we'll, we'll explore it as the rest are kind of getting, getting to it. Okay, shoot. So, what is your most profitable item or service? Well, I do, you know, luggage and gifts and stuff like that. So, the most profitable would be luggage because it's the most expensive of the bunch. Okay. The end, but we don't go there. Okay. So then, um, you know, I have my business travelers, I have my family travelers, and then I have the exotic travelers. Okay. Each one takes a different type of trip, and will need, need different dynamics to address that trip. Okay, so just off the top, who do you think would be your most profitable segment? Who would pay the most if you could position the benefits and the desired outcome? Well, the avatar in all three would be a woman between the ages of uh, 30 and 50, because they're the ones who usually have their pockets, you know, they, they, they're the ones who spend the money or the decision makers usually. Correct. But of the three markets, who is more apt to see more value in that market and be more apt to spend more on the product? Probably the business travelers. Okay. I'm just thinking that's a larger market. Tell me a little bit about the exotic travelers. The exotic travelers are the people that try to do everything in a small backpack or, or something they can draw in. Okay. They're going to carry without okay. wheels. They're going to be you know, hiking, you know, tracking, 
Got you know, and, and that kind of stuff. So, it, okay. and, and depending on that, I, was, I just travel. wasn't. I just wasn't sure what he defined <laughs> as right. exotic <laughs> travel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. It's not it's, taking a cruise. Okay. Okay. No, when when you said exotic travel, I'm thinking like somebody wants to go on safari. Safari. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that was the first thing that came to mind. So I that's one of the easiest travel because you just throw it up and you've got. Yeah. But when you're talking about having to be limited because you're taking small planes and trains and, and, and rucksacks and, and so on, the size of the bag and then what you carry is tr truly important. You know, yeah. if you've only got to have two shirts, does it matter? Yes. And so forth and so on. So it's, it, then it would become the most profitable because uh, if you have to buy a shirt to take this trip that costs you $65 or $100, and you're taking two of those, and the same thing with the underwear and the socks and so on, to be able to fit into this small bag that's not watertight and easy to get in and out of and have organized it away with these pouches. So now you now have a complete package that addresses all the issues that I could address. Yeah. Like so I think I think stones. you're absolutely <laughs> I think he's absolutely right. It's gonna be the business traveler that's gonna spend the most because he's gonna see the most value. The guy that's carrying the knapsack, he, he's he's our green guy. As soon as it costs a lot, he's out. He doesn't care that much about the greenness. And it's, it's going to be the business traveler. So anybody else? Who, who else has one? I guess um, magic with a message, inspirational presentation. Okay. So of your of your markets, what markets did you come up with to hit that? Who wants to hear that? I think church for afternoon performers. Okay. Um, They're gonna pay the most. No. <laughs> well, we're just coming up with three, and then we'll pick the oh, okay. we'll pick the most. Um, possibly a business. Okay, business owners. Well, if I. Okay, there, there's an interesting thing. What she just said there, that, is, that was very revealing. What she threw out there was her belief, and it was based on her experience. So with the ACT program, what I show you in there, when you're in analysis, you're starting with your belief system, but then you're doing actual research and analysis to verify it. So I can tell you for sure that business owners are not in the category that they don't have money. Small business. Okay, so all that's that, what she said. So that yeah, immediately yeah, stepped yeah, to her mind. I know big yeah. corporations do. So, so all that means is, yeah, you just need to go up the ladder to where they do have the money. Right. So you know, corporate America yeah. is is where you, you know that would be your most profitable right. market. So you need to figure out you know from there. What that is. So do you guys kind of get the get the picture? You're looking at who has the ability to pay the most, and based on the desired outcome, who has the willingness to pay the most? Like the desired outcome on the water, desired outcome, help the earth, run faster, or not die. Who's gonna pay the most? You save your life, right? That's obvious. So sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. And, and you can back that up with, with online research to, you know, to prove that through. So I threw another example up there, the, the fence mask and snorkel. This is from an actual client that I worked with. And they came to me and I knew they could convert. They've been converting for years and they sell water sports equipment to hotels and resorts. So when they came to me, they wanted to drive traffic to sell large volumes of water sports equipment to the, to the resorts. I'm like, okay, cool, that's what they did, that's what I thought they wanted, so that's what I did for them. Every year I bring the clients in for a meeting and we talk about how things are going and how I can do better for them and where we can sharpen the sword. And I brought them back in, they said, everything's going great, we're selling this stuff, let me out by the truckload. And I said, well, of what you sell, what's the most profitable thing? 
And he said, well, our most profitable item is water slides. And I'm like, I didn't even know you did water slides. That should have been part of the conversation originally, but they didn't tell me, right? So I readjusted their program. I said, okay, let me, you know, let me fix this. We'll move forward. We'll try and get you water slide business. So a few months into the program, I, I get a very interesting story. He said that he got a call on Saturday. He happened to be in the office on a Saturday and he said nobody ever called on Saturday because they're generally not open. But he picks up the phone and on the other end, the woman says, this is Celine Dion. And he thought it was a joke, a knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops. on Celine Dion. And she called right back. She said, hey, you know, we got disconnected. This is Celine Dion again. And he's like, like Celine Dion from Las Vegas? She said, yeah. He goes, well, how, you know, what, what can I do for you? She says, I need a water slide. And he's like, well, how did you know I did that? She said, well, you're first on Google for it. He, she wound up flying him out to Las Vegas that afternoon, and he put a million dollar water slide in his backyard. There oh it is. My <laughs> Off of a little change in profitable market. Wow. He went from how many how many fins and masks do you need to sell to make a million dollars? How many water slide sellers are there that it wouldn't be that hard to get right on top of no. Google? No, it wasn't. I, I, it was a snap for me to do. So he comes back from this, and he's all charged up about it. Was this, he, this water slide right there in the center was a million? Yeah, just that, yeah, that little that spiral, uh, that little spiral not job. Anything else? Just he did. Yeah, he did some other embellishments to it. And, but, and last minute rush and all kinds of. But right. yeah, you know, she doesn't care. A million dollars? No, well, no she doesn't. But I'm just saying. But that, that is a, people that want a, a water slide that, like mm -hmm. that, they don't care how much it costs. Right. They just want something better than what the neighbors got. <laughs> you know, so understanding that is important. So anyway, he comes back and he's all excited. Now he's charged up. He's like, I want to do water parks. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Can you even do a water park? Let's talk about this. Let's be reasonable. He's like, yeah. He goes, I have all the vendors. He goes, I can do water parks. A few months later, he calls me. He said, you'll never guess who called me now. He put in a $100 million water park in Dubai. Oh, wow. off, of the, off of Google, off the website. Oh, wow. So that is making that shift in, in who is my most profitable market. I mean, that's a live fire example. I can't come up with a better one <laughs> of, of making a shift in who you want to sell to mm -hmm. and increasing your business by a hundred million dollars in one transaction. That's pretty cool. And that's the basis really? for the whole ACT program. <laughs> you retire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's where we start. If you don't figure that piece out, I don't even want you moving forward. It's like, get that piece right. And that will reveal who your avatar is. A lot of people talk about how important it is to create an avatar. Yeah, once you know what market it's out of, very important. But if you don't know what market is, you'll probably get it wrong. You'll probably create an avatar that doesn't appeal to a profitable market, and you're probably going to work really hard and not make much money. And I know that's not your desired outcome. So this is how you convert that. And that takes us to the next step, which is creating the avatar. So. The avatar, a lot of people are confused about what that even means. And really, all it is, an avatar is simply a representation of who your ideal client is. And for you to understand who that is, you have to understand what the most profitable market is. You know, it's that whole 80-20 rule. Who are the 20% we can work with that will bring us 80% of our income? And what that does is that reveals the next thing is who do you not want? Right. <laughs> this is the guy you want to get rid of. He represents the 80% of your time spent that brings you 20% of your income. Can we just fire him? Can we just fire the bad clients and just get them out of our hair? Yeah. 
your life will be so much better if you do that. And that's what identifying your ideal customer and creating that avatar is going to do for you in your business. You know, it's going to make you attract those people and repel the guy you don't want. When you start speaking the right language, that's exactly what will happen. And that's that messaging that I talked about. You can't create the message unless you know the market. So you see how those, those two go together? And you've got to do them in order? And you can see how if you do them out of order, that's never going to work. You're going to wind up with a disaster in your business. So the three things that I like to focus on in creating the avatar is, I've talked a lot about this this morning, is the timeline. Figuring out that timeline of where they are and where they want to be. The level of awareness, and I'm going to cover that in a minute, and their wants, emotions, and beliefs. Really, really crucial that you figure those things out. So here's the timeline. At the beginning, it's their current situation. And I always like to start with that. Where are they currently? What are they experiencing? And nobody, I mean nobody, is ever where they want to be. Because when you get where you think you want it to be, you're going to want to be somewhere else. That's just human nature. You know, if you tell me you want to make a million dollars, and I say, poof, here we are. You've got a million dollars in your bank account. Next thing you're going to tell me is you want to. Right? You're never going to be happy. We as human beings are never going to be happy with our situation. We're always going to want better. That's just part of our makeup. You know, that's maybe what separates us from the animal kingdom. You know, we, we are always evolving. We want to be better. I thought that was just me. Oh, no. We are all made out of the same materials. <laughs> so when you, when you have that place of where they are, you look at where is their next desired outcome, and how does your product fit into that? That's how we're going to create that messaging. And to do that, we want to look at two things in the middle, the milestones and the hurdles. You know, what milestones would they need to get to to know they were on their way and gain that confidence that they can actually get there? Because if they don't have any confidence they can do it, they'll have no desire to buy your product or service. And what are the hurdles that's going to stop them? Why have they not gotten there already? What has stopped them to this point? What are those hurdles? Have you guys heard of lead magnets? Yeah. How you put lead magnets out to generate you know, response and get people on your mailing list? The best possible lead magnet that you could put out is identifying one of the hurdles that will take them to a milestone where they can accomplish a step toward their desired outcome, which will increase their confidence. If you give them that piece and you take them to that point, they're going to feel like they can get there. And their desire to work with you is going to go through the roof. Their desire to buy your product that's going to take them the rest of the way, it doesn't matter how much it costs now. Because you're the one that they believe can get them there because you took them the first step. So that's the timeline. Now the level of awareness, pyramid of awareness, I like to call it. Nobody really focuses on this. And this is where most businesses lose major opportunity. They focus at the top of the pyramid, the people that are already aware. And those of you that, that know much about traffic, you know there's search traffic, and then there's like social traffic. And when you're focused on SEO and search engine optimization and pay-per-click ads, people that are searching for things, they're up there in the product aware, sometimes they're in the problem aware, but they're aware either that they have a problem, they, they're looking for a solution, they know about a solution, maybe they're, they've heard of products and they're actually seeking. The higher they are up, the closer they are to a buying decision easier it is to, to sell them, especially when they're in most aware. When they're in most aware, they've already done all their research. They know what they want. They know what it costs. They're ready to buy it. They're searching. They're making the last search before the credit card comes out. That's where a lot of people want to focus their effort. That's the smallest piece of the pyramid. That's the smallest opportunity. It's the easiest to capture, but it also happens to be the most competitive. 
because that's where everybody wants to be. They all want to be at that point, so they're all fighting for it. That's why the cost of traffic up there is phenomenal. You know, if you've got a highly profitable thing and you're fighting in that little piece up there, you're going to pay a lot for traffic. So you damn well better be able to convert it or you're going to lose your shorts on that one. <laughs> so down at the bottom, there's a lot of products and services that people are completely unaware of. There's a lot of problems they're completely unaware of. And I'll, I'll give you a really good example from Perry Felcher, who's in the internet marketing space. He came out with an info product about the problem of biting your nails. And he did research and he found out that there's millions of people that routinely bite their nails. And it's a problem that they're not aware of. They just think it's normal, you know, biting their nails. They don't see it as a problem. They're completely unaware there's an, even an issue. So what he does is he comes out and you can't can't do that in search because they're not searching. They don't know there's a problem. So you are not going to reach them in search. But you can reach them on Facebook because they're all on Facebook. So if you bring that to their awareness of, you know, asking them a question like, you know, do you bite your nails? And that if, if you're a nail biter, you're going to look at that. Yeah, I do. And then you make, an, you make another statement, a claim of, did you know there's serious problems associated with that? And you're like, oh, no, I didn't know that. Now, now you're intrigued, so you click on it. And now he, he starts activating you to, this is a problem. You know, and, and depending on who the avatar is, he'll address it differently, and he'll bring a different message. Like if you're a business person, or you're somebody that is, uh, it's important for your appearance, yeah, and, 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 and how you come across and the way people perceive you you know how they say first impressions last forever if they notice that your nails are all chewed off they're going to think differently about you and he brings that into their awareness and it's not a big enough problem that they're going to say yeah this is I got to solve this right now so he follows them with an email sequence, and he said it takes about seven to nine exposures before they buy. And after they're aware of the problem, all he does is he keeps reminding them of the problem. He sends an email out, and the subject line is, still biting your nails? Question mark. The next week, still biting your nails? Question mark. He said about the seventh to the ninth time, they say, yep, I am, click. I need to fix this, and they buy the product. So, can I interject? Because mm -hmm. uh, I sometimes I'll be curious. Let's say I have a pain in my neck, just for example, uh -huh. and then I'll see a thing on Facebook about neck pain leads to dementia or something. I'm like, whoa. Uh -huh. So <laughs> then I click there. on to read it, and then it's like, uh, then I start getting emails. But then it's like a long video like one of those, not a person mm -hmm. video. The cartoon but, videos. And it goes on forever, and it's like, yeah, you can die, you can die. <laughs> you know, you're, uh -huh. you'll be in a wheelchair. All these things will happen yeah. with my neck hurt. But then it's like, I don't have the patience to go through that whole sales. I know you're going to sell me something. Just tell me what it is and tell me how much it is. Uh -huh. I'll See buy that? it. But it, I can't That's wait that long. That's the we difference. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a difference in avatars, because see, you're a different avatar for them. You're a business person. Time is valuable to you. Okay. You know, you want to cut through the crap, cut through the chase. You do not sit through long sales presentations. Right. And if they understood that about you, they wouldn't give you that video. That's where understanding your ideal customer and, and getting that. Right. Because sure I'm in the, unfortunately in the age demographic to get those kinds of pitches, sure. so they think I'm sitting home in front of my TV with nothing to do. But sure, but that's another perception now to yeah. get to, to really understand this. Like you have the perception of those people don't have money. You have a perception of I'd never go, I'd never sit through that. But the avatar they're focused on, and what that is in in, in the real world. 
that's the old-fashioned salesperson that would come and sit in your living room and right. spew and spew and spew until you either bought it or you fed him dinner. <laughs> you don't want him sitting at your table. You want him the hell out of here. So you just buy it and off, off you go. Problem solved. Yeah. That's the long sales letter. Right. I, can I throw something in on that? So we're the traffic people. So what we do is we test that. Uh -huh. We'll test the long form ad versus the short form. Whichever one gets the most results, that's the one we're going with. So you may not appeal to it, but theoretically, the numbers say that more people like that than don't like it. And that's how we, that's they part like of our process. Some of them are informational. Like I had one about your dog's, I don't know, diet or tooth or something. And it was interesting. It was like in very informative. And I, but it's like, come on. I don't, you know, I want to buy it. Just tell me what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a different, you're, you're just a different. Yeah, you're, you're different. I'm, I'm different. Yeah, yeah, you do. So it doesn't appeal to, but but just so you guys kind of know, on the traffic side, we do homework to, to kind of identify that. Then we actually test it, and then we take so it down. So can they tell when it, that it gets clipped off in the middle? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. They know I want exactly. Them to know that. We'll, they know we'll, exactly we'll show you something. We'll show you something. Email. Tell them. We'll Just show you more about shorter. this this afternoon. We'll show you <laughs> how that works this afternoon. But, yeah. In theory, someone's tested that, determined that that's more effective, and that's why it's out there more than the other type of ads you're seeing. Yeah, and that, that right there is why you don't want to go off of your own reactions and emotions. Mm -hmm. You want to go off of your ideal customer's reactions and emotions, not yours. You need to take yourself out of the picture. It's not about you. Like, it's not about you. It's not about what you think. It's about what they think. <laughs> so that's that's a really important thing to, to differentiate. Yes. I just had something to add. This big revelation came out in the magic world, and you know, people that do birthday parties, you know, get paid that much. You got to do a lot. And this guy came out, the magicians for millionaires, and a party for them is twenty thousand yeah. dollars, and so you put Celine's up. Well, her kids having a birthday party. I want a magician. Oh yeah, twenty grand. That's nothing. All right. That's nothing. That's that's right. Oh my god. Yeah, that's he's, like that's like nailed buying it. an extra pizza. He nailed it. <laughs> over all these people, over yeah. top people in the business. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's that's identifying who that ideal customer is, and then focusing on them, speaking their language, bringing their message to them. That will. That one thing will change your business. It'll change your life. If you just do that one thing, that will really make a huge difference. So the next thing I, I talked about was the once emotions and beliefs. And understanding this about your ideal customer, understanding who they are and what they want. You know, I talked about those, those emotions and seducing the heart. The heart is what wants to buy things. You know, Wants always come from the heart. It's the head that gets in the way. You know, we have to convince the head. We do that with the claim proof benefit statements. But that's what the head wants. The head wants logic. The heart just desires what it wants. It's not logical. It just knows I want this. I don't care why. The head's job is to protect the heart. So the head's always going to say no. It's going to say, no, I don't want you to buy that because I don't believe it's going to give you what you really want. You're going to get hurt. <laughs> so the head is what puts the brakes on. So when you can get the heart to want it and you can convince the head it's okay, we're going to, we're going to get what we want, then you'll make a sale. So it's those, you know, those, those beliefs that they have is what's going to become their objections. <coughs> those objections are just the head saying, hold on here, I don't believe it. And that's where those beliefs are overcome by the claim proof benefit statements. So that's, that's where those come in. Now that takes us to language. You know, fitting your pieces of, of the puzzle together, making sure the message matches the market. That's what it's all about. And when you do this, this is like, this is great marketing. <clears throat> when you do great marketing, Sales literally become superfluous. 
don't have to worry about sales. You'll make sales automatically. If you created desire, demand and desire in your marketplace, you it doesn't nothing else matters. They're gonna to want to buy it anyway. It's like when was the last time <clears throat> when was the last time you guys went into McDonald's and were met by a salesperson? <laughs> you know? You know, they don't need salespeople. <laughs> they have done phenomenal marketing. You know, you go in there with a demand and desire for their product, they don't need to sell it to you. All they need is order takers. You know, that right there would change your business. You know, there's there's the question. How many salespeople work at McDonald's? They don't. So here's here's the question. Here's what that brings up in your business. Would you rather make sales calls for the rest of your life or just answer the phone and take orders? <laughs> How great would life be if your marketing created that for you, created demand and desire in the marketplace, and all you had to do was pick up the phone and take the order. You didn't have to convince anybody of anything. The marketing did that for you. It seduced the heart and convinced the head. All on autopilot. When you got that, your site converts. Life is great because then you can just buy traffic and you can literally buy the life that you want. So there it is again, seduce the heart with claims, promises, and emotions. It's those benefits. Those benefits are gonna drive the heart crazy. That's what's gonna make it want that. You're gonna convince the head with the proof, features, and again, the benefits. The head's what wants to see the features. It wants to know what are we buying? Why do we want that? You know, Tie it back to the benefits. Three-dimensionalize the benefits. And that, you know, you're, you're just really going to kill it with that. So this is a little statement here. Lead your prospect through a learning process where they discover why your solution is perfect for them. That's what your marketing should do. That's called education-based marketing. You know, grab their attention and pull them into an education-based marketing system that does that. It leads them through that process of learning why you are the best solution for them. That's going to create demand and desire and sales going to become superfluous. Here's the actual recipe 276 years old from Benjamin Franklin. It's, uh, it's in the box there. It says he talks about the science of heat and heat transmission. That's where he made claims about how his product would put heat in your home. And then he called upon authorities to reinforce his arguments. That's the proof points. So it's claim, proof, and then it says, and highlighted the healthful benefits. So that's what he used 276 years ago, and it's still working today. It's claim, proof, benefit, to install a belief, to convince the head, to give the heart what it wants. And he sold more of these than any other vendor. And if you read on, it said Franklin's stove didn't really work very well until another inventor improved it. Yet it's still today, we believe the Franklin stove is one of the best heaters ever invented <laughs> because he convinced us of it yeah. with that, that simple formula. That is very powerful. <laughs> so, again, I was talking about education-based marketing. There's four different types of beliefs people may or may not have to want to purchase your product. And, you know, one of the biggest beliefs is in themselves. If they believe they can't have the outcome or they can't get it, then there's no demand and there's no desire to purchase anything. So if you identify that your avatar doesn't have the belief in themselves that they can do it, you better create one. And you create it with a claim proof benefit statement. You, you reinstall a new belief. And now, they, now that creates demand and desire. They're gonna also have beliefs in the market itself. You know, maybe they believe that, oh, this market's full of shysters, everybody lies, it's all hocus pocus. I don't believe it. So again, you, you might have to address that. That may or may not exist. 
They're going to have beliefs about particular products, and some of these beliefs are created from what they've heard in the market, what they've seen, maybe what they've experienced. And then they're going to have a belief in you and your product. Is it real, and can it really give me what I want? So those are the four basic beliefs that you're going to need to have in place for them to want to purchase from you. Now, I use claim proof benefit three times equals a sale. One might do it, it might take 10 to do it. It depends on how expensive your item is and how many of those bad beliefs you need to change. I don't think we need an update right now, do we? <laughs> okay, so the proof, I talked about this this morning, third party is the best where they're backing up what you're saying. So now it's not you saying it anymore, it's being said out in the world. So that, that's gonna be much more believable. You could focus on their experience. If you know they have experience where, you know, maybe they did something once and it worked, and then it didn't work and it didn't work, they know it worked once. So you just need to reinstate why it's not working now and how they can get back to that. That's experience. And then you can base it on the marketplace. You can say, you know, there's so many people in the marketplace, they've get, gotten this result from doing this particular thing. So that, that kind of, of proof. And again, these, these claims, you need to use the claims to install new beliefs and then back them up with the proof and tie it to the benefits. That's, that's the whole thing. Did you guys all hear when I went through this this morning, the three-dimensionalizing of the benefits? Now you've got to hear it, see it, feel it. I think you came in later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I missed it. Okay, so let me just, I'll, I'll use the diet example just real quick to go through it. The functional of the three-part belief or the three-part benefit is being able to hear it. So in the diet world, the, the claim or the promise to the benefit is you're going to lose the weight. So when you hear that, it's one thing. But next, we want you to see it. So we call on a part of your memory that knows what you looked like when you were 20 pounds lighter. Everyone knows that. We've all looked at ourselves in the mirror almost every day of our life. So we can call up that image of what we used to look like when we weighed a different weight. So you say, you're going to lose weight. And, it, and you're going to be back to that body that was where you were 20 pounds lighter. Remember what that looked like when you saw yourself in the mirror and you looked so great. So now you heard it and you see it. And then you bring in the feeling. You wanted to feel it. And this is where it ties back to your research of why they wanted it in the first place. And I use the example of the research of the woman that is going to her class reunion. And she wants to be noticed. She wants to look good. So you say, imagine walking into the reunion and all the heads turn and everybody notices how great you look and they all comment on it. So now you've had her hear it, see it, and feel it. She's very, very attached to it at this point. That's how you three-dimensionalize benefits. And when you do that, that really moves the needle as far as getting them to want it. So when you're trying to seduce the heart, Nothing seduces the heart more than that. Tying that to the hear, see, feel, the outcome. You ready to buy? I, how much? How much? <laughs> so this like literally changes service, everything. And it, the service, like how do you make somebody, they more have to make a connection with me and rather than the service itself. Well, see, it, Does that make sense? the yeah. service, whether whether it's a product or service, it doesn't matter. Nobody wants to buy that. They want to buy the outcome of that. So no, you, I understand, but they can get the outcome of what I what I do a million other ways. That's where. So I have to sell myself, not my. It's service. not necessarily yourself. Again, they're not buying you. They're not buying what you have. They want to buy the outcome. Right. So what you have to do is you have to instill the belief that you have a unique mechanism a that's going to sauce. deliver, yeah, a secret sauce that's going to <coughs> deliver the outcome. And that's you. I so think it's 
you get better at doing that? What's that? How do you get better at doing that? The, the I mean, way that actually that's that's what's up next is the unique mechanism. Oh, it's, it's, it's this is the thing that delivers the result. This is the thing that's actually going to do the work to deliver the results. And so of the thing process. that thing, it, it, according to like to before I get face to face with somebody, is a message that they read, right? Mm -hmm. So and, you, and you're right. Your personality, the thing. Most people, one of the beliefs for them to purchase in you, remember I said the four different types right. of belief, one of those ties back to you. They have to believe that you are the one that can do this for them. That's where people call that building trust and rapport. Mm -hmm. They say, you know, have to know, like, and trust a person in order to do business with them. That's, that's basically what that's referring to. They have to have that belief system in place. They have to believe you can deliver the result and if you come across as ruffling their feathers and they don't like you, chances are they're probably not going to buy from you. Right. So if that's the case, you need to figure out how do I reverse that? How do I put a new belief that they do like me? And I am the one for them and I'm going to solve their problems. So it's that, you know, it's almost like some people call it unique selling proposition. I call it a unique mechanism. It's much more powerful thinking about the mechanism, thinking about what is the thing about my product or my service that's going to deliver them to the, the desired outcome? What is going to make it different for them? Because a lot of people have tried everything that, that we all offer, and usually it doesn't work. A lot of times it's because they didn't do it, but that's not, that's not the issue. It's they had the experience it didn't work. So, like, diet is a perfect example. Everyone's been on a diet, and it never worked, right? We all want it to work. Right. So, what's our unique mechanism? The guy that brings the diet pill to the market first, the first guy. Imagine if you were the first person to have a diet pill. Your promise to the market is, hey, I know you've tried everything, and it's not your fault. You didn't have this pill. This is the unique mechanism. This is the thing that's going to do the work to shed the pounds off you. This little thing, it's going to work its butt off. You don't have to do a thing. Take the pill and lose weight. How would you like to have that as your unique mechanism? You would have sold the crap out of that product, just like the guys that did when they came out with it. And naturally, it didn't work because, you know, you know as well as anybody, you got to do more than just take a pill. You've got to, you know, reduce your intake and increase your movement. But the heart desperately desires the right. easy button. So when you can convince the head, hey, I've got a unique thing. You haven't tried this before. This is going to make it work. Then the head's like, okay, heart, let's give it a shot. I think we, I think we have a, a good chance. <laughs> Didn't they ruin their reputation? How could you sell again after that? Well, no, they sold. They still sold because what happens is whenever you do something well. You create your own competitors. So as soon as you come out with a great thing, everyone else is going to be right next to you. And, and three weeks from now, there's 10 people in the marketplace selling the diet pill, right? Now it becomes a price war because you're all the same. So whoever has the lowest price is going to make the sale. But you don't want to be in that game. So what did the guy do? What did the guy with the magic pill do? changed his message. He said, my pill has Garcinia Cambogia in it. That's the unique mechanism. That's why the other pills didn't do it for you. And the truth of the matter was, they all had it. It's just nobody said it. So the first guy to actually say it, guess what? He killed it. Because he knew what they wanted and he tied a unique mechanism to it. So now the head was like, oh, I get it. I understand why the pill I, I bought last time didn't work. It didn't have that. <laughs> it's all about the message. It's nothing to do with reality at all. <laughs> it's just the message. They all had the same thing. So now what happens three weeks later when we all repackage and we all re-message, and now we're all selling Garcinia Cambogia. Now what? It's price war again, right? right. So what do we do next? Now. Our Garcinia Cambogia is cold-pressed. 
It doesn't have the enzyme cooked out of it that really does the work to actually strip the weight off yet. Our Garcinian composure comes out of the rainforest of the yada yada or whatever. That's why. Whatever it is, you just have to repackage it. That David Ogilvy, he was brilliant at that. He was masterful at that. He, I forget what it was, but he did something about the cigarettes. All cigarettes seemed to be the same in the 50s. And he came up with, uh, our tobacco is toasted. Our tobacco is toasted. You know, and that's what makes it, you know, whatever. And the reality is, well, it was all toasted. Nobody <laughs> said it. <laughs> so, but because he did, he boosted their sales through the roof because he had a unique mechanism. So it's, it, it really is. I mean, every one of these things, I'm giving you game changer after game changer here. And this is probably stuff you haven't thought of in, you know, in your marketing. This is the stuff ad agencies do. That's why they get the huge results. That's why they get what they get. They've got formulas and recipes and they've been using them for hundreds of years. It's seriously, it's a no-brainer. I've packaged it up in like a simple system and, and basically handed you guys all the recipes. And then later on after lunch, Anthony is going to come up and he's going to talk about traffic. And traffic really is where arithmetic comes into this. You know, it, it's, that's where you figure out what is your math. What's the cost of your product? And I'm not going to go into, you know, all the nitty gritty here, but basically I'll leave that to Anthony and talk about that. But it's when you figure out, how, when I put a dollar in, I get a dollar fifty back. You know, I put a dollar in, I get two dollars back. I've got a converting machine. I know how to, how to adjust those beliefs. You know, I know how to seduce the heart, convince the head. Sales is a non-issue. My marketing has made sales superfluous. Now it's just math. It's like we know if we buy a dollar of traffic, we get two dollars back. So for every dollar out, we're getting a dollar of profit back. We get our original dollar back plus another one. So if you're making $10,000 a month and you need to double it, what do we have to do? We have to put $10,000 more dollars into advertising. And we're going to get 20 back. That's going to add another 10 to our bottom line. It's just math. It's just arithmetic. So pretty cool stuff. So here's the next question. What happens when you don't follow the recipe? I think you guys all know if you can get a recipe for disaster. <laughs> it's <laughs> great. How, how many times have you not followed a recipe and you, you wind up going to McDonald's because you can't eat it? And here's, here's proof of that. This is Forbes magazine. 18, 18 months of being in business and 80% are gone in that first 18 months. That's some pretty crappy odds, right? They're not talking about big businesses running ad agencies. They're talking about you guys. 80% of you in 18 months will be out of it and into something else or back working a job. I just, just excuse me, I just wondering, in that survey, um, do many have college degrees and is business or marketing teach anything close to this? It, it doesn't Nothing. matter, it's across the board. And business, to answer your question, business is not taught this way. What I'm talking about here is not taught in colleges. I, I, just, I, I actually got asked to speak at Notre Dame in August. I actually went and presented what you're seeing right now to Notre Dame. They don't teach this stuff. This stuff is like, like revolutionary to them. They're teaching the old school stuff. And, that's why ad agencies are worth so much. It's almost like the secret club that only the ones with deep pockets can get to. You know, it all, it, it's not available. This stuff's not available on this level. It has never been. So it's like, you know, how long have you guys been around? Have you heard anything about what I've been talking about? You know, these little, these little things. These are all game changers. This is ripped right out of the belly of the ad agencies. You know, I started working with ad agencies in 1985 when I was a, a special effects photographer. I did stuff that nobody else could do. So I got the privilege of sitting at these boardrooms in the ad agencies 
when they were dreaming up these ad campaigns, and then they'd look at me and say, can you put that on film? I'd say, you bet I can, that's why I'm here. That's why you pay me what you pay me, and make <laughs> that happen. I can put anything you can think of on a piece of film. And that was a great ride. I made a lot of money back in the mid 80s doing that. And then this little thing called Photoshop came along. Oops. And I'm like, uh oh, my ride is soon to be over. <laughs> but I learned an incredible amount by watching their process, being able to sit in those boardrooms and watch how they develop those ad campaigns. And they never went into creation without a tremendous amount of analysis. They spent 50% of their time in that analysis, figuring out the market, the avatar, what was important to them before they started creating ads, before they started into any creative whatsoever. They figured that out and they nailed it. They had all that data down. That's how they did it. That's why they're successful. And then once they create the proper messaging, then they do the media buys. That's when they buy the traffic. That's how they do it, every time. So that's what will happen to your business if you don't do it. That's what your business will look like. And that is not what I want for you guys. Us either. So, so I have literally put the recipe for success together. That's what the ACT program is. You know, I call it an automated online selling system. And it, it is, it's literally every recipe for success that you'll need from the beginning, from figuring out your, your most profitable market, right through creating all the ad campaigns, right to when you take it to the traffic that Anthony's gonna talk about after lunch. <coughs> and when you do that, this is what you get. You get a money printing machine. Remember I talked about, you know, when you figure your numbers and you put a dollar in and you get $2 out? When you have that ability, you literally have a personal printing machine, a money printing machine. That's what it's all about. That's when you can scale and you can grow. And that's what's in here. This is the, the ACT marketing protocol. It's every recipe that you need. I call it the little blue pill for business. <laughs> <laughs> so again, you know, it's it's, a simple step-by-step -step solution. And it's, it's basically what you need to be financially free in a small business scenario. You know, I know you guys wanna to get to the big business, but you've gotta start the small business and you've gotta conquer that. And you probably will not conquer it without these recipes or these type of recipes. So it's really all that packaged up together. And I love this, this profit doesn't have to be painful. How much confusion and frustration have you guys experienced already? How many of you have bought at least three marketing products or programs and not gotten any results out of it? Yeah. You know, the question is, did they have these formulas? Probably not. There's a lot of great products out there, like people buy ClickFunnels. I love ClickFunnels. It's an awesome product but it doesn't make a business. It's not going to make you a dime if you don't have that marketing message. It's a thing to create, take that marketing message and create an online piece to your business so you can drive traffic to it. But ClickFunnels itself isn't going to make a dime. You have to load it with your marketing message. To do that, you've got to create that out of your analysis of your market and your avatar. So if you've got the pieces in place, profit really doesn't have to be painful. So you guys don't have to remain in that pain. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. So success, that is, here it is. You guys want to hear about this or anybody interested at this point in how to get involved in the ACT program? And how much is it? Take advantage of it. <laughs> and he's going to do a 45-minute video on that. So just I hold can, on. <laughs> I can tell you the prize is priceless. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there you go. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually give you a, a lesson in putting an offer together. And that's how I'm going to show you how, what the price is. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you can really learn from. It's going to cover almost everything that we've talked about. So 
So literally, the stuff that's in there, it's exactly what I talked about, analysis, creation, and traffic to build you that business that will convert like crazy. This is kind of, and, and all of you are going to get this. I'm going to give you a form to fill out whether you decide to, to get into the program or not. And all you have to do on the form is just give me your contact information, and I'll send you this, which is this is a blueprint of the whole program. <coughs> You'll have access to the blueprint whether you get involved or not. And I also do a webinar that covers this too, so it'll, it'll kind of walk you through the process. Because I really want this in everybody's hands, you know, whether you can afford it or not. I want everybody to have access to the information. It's just, you know, whatever level you can afford, this is the free level here, and you're all going to get that. So, uh, and again, I'm going to skip over this stuff because this is all the stuff I told you. This is the all about it that doesn't matter. You don't care anything about this. All you care about is what you're going to get out of it, and I think you guys know that already. So I'm just going to skip over all this stuff. The cost of the complete system is normally $19.97. That's what I sell it for. And what I've decided to do to reverse risk, this is part of what we teach in there is how to create an offer. And one of the things you do is you reverse the risk. So you can reverse risk in a lot of different ways. You can reverse risk by a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's one way you can reverse risk. I love unique stuff. So I came up with something that is very unique to this. And I call it a results in advance. How would you guys like to get the results before you actually have to pay for the whole thing? <laughs> so that's what I've came, come up with. And here's another thing. I've, got, I've kind of got these out of order a little bit. Because <laughs> this, was, this was made for a whole different presentation than what I'm giving you guys. So, and to your benefit, I'm skipping over all the stuff you don't want to hear. So you're going to love this. One of the things that once you get in the program, you get continued access to me and my support for just 30 bucks a month, $29.97 a month. I don't know anybody out there that gives access to somebody like me for 30 bucks a month. And you get basically, I do four calls every Thursday. Every Thursday, I do four calls. Or actually, you know, every month I do four calls. It's generally four Thursdays. So I'm on there to answer any questions that you've got. A lot of you guys are in the program now, and you've experienced that. You can literally get on there and talk to me about any problem you're having throughout the whole program. And, you know, I'm really good at this. I'm really good at coming up with unique mechanisms. I'm coming up with, you know, who is your most profitable client, all that stuff. So that's one of the, the huge benefits of getting in this is this continued access to me to help you for just 30 bucks a month. So here's the results in advance offer. We've taken the 1997 and we basically are selling it to you for 497. That's the first payment. The second payment of 1500 is due after you've made hundred thousand dollars using the system. So if you don't make that's <laughs> if you wind up not using it and it becomes shelf help, then you don't pay the two thousand. You only pay the four ninety seven for it. And if you look at that, it's a dollar thirty six a day. I mean, looking at what you're going to get out of this, the potential upside, and what the cost is, it's a dollar thirty six a day. That's what you're risking to get the upside benefit of this, which I've covered all the stuff that you're gonna get. It really is a no brainer. It's like, what else? If you think about what else could you buy for $1.36, the only thing I can think of is maybe one or two bites of a Big Mac. You know, a couple bucks more and you get the whole thing. <laughs> but that, that's how I've positioned the offer to make it a unique offer. And hopefully to make it an irresistible offer. When I've presented this to rooms, there's like 2% of people that don't take me up on the offer. Because literally, yeah, the offer gets better. There is a 30-day money-back guarantee offer also. So it's a, the, four nine, the whatever, the 1997 plus um, $29.95 a month? Yeah. Yeah, the, 
the first cost gets you the whole system, and then the second one is ongoing support. So it's it's literally you have the ability. I'm giving you the, the ability to put me on your team for thirty bucks a month. I think you'll probably get more value out of me than thirty dollars a month. <laughs> I just have to say this because I'm like sitting here going, I've been working with John for gosh, probably almost two years now, right? We've yeah. known each other. This is the most amazing person I've ever met in my life, and I've learned so much from him. And on those calls, he gives everything. Like, he will stay on longer if he needs to. He will, he will talk to you if it's, like, really something you need. He, will he is so giving. I mean, he normally charges, what, $1,000 an hour just to sit with you, but he will sit with you with this program. And I've, it's just every time I've heard this presentation, who knows how many times. And I've worked with him. I've, I've, I help with the coaching and stuff. I can help with that. But every time, there's just something else that clicks in my head. And I, there was nothing yeah. I would ever promote more than I would Don. Yeah, I'll give you a different example. Because um, <laughs> I know Don, too, for a while. Um, one day I... A lot more years. <laughs> <laughs> one day, I, my wife has a business, brick and mortar business. And, and I wanted to scale it up and do some stuff. So I've been working on this for like a month and a half, trying to figure out how to go into a new area. Got on a call with John, said, John, you know, want to, wipe, want to expand the wife's business and do some stuff. And he's like, boat owners. And I'm like, she has a day spa. And I was like, I was like people have money to own a boat. They have money for a spa. And what you're going to do is you're going to target the males because they're the guys that are going to forget their wife's birthday, anniversary, or whatever. <laughs> and you're going to send them an ad campaign, buy a gift certificate. You know, so, so I made it easy for him to get out of the doghouse, and I found <laughs> the right people who could afford to do that. Made money. So in simple terms, every time I've listened to what he said, it has worked. When I haven't listened to what he said, I try to be smarter than some things. <laughs> the same way. So I just simply say what he said, I've done it, it works. It worked where it made money. It actually made an impact, changed things in our household, so. That's my thing. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I mean, he literally has the biggest harbor in California, right across from his business or his wife's business. So all of those rich boat owners, they're literally right across the street. Wow. Wow. It's like that's a gold mine you're sitting on top of. They never even, they never even would have thought of that. That's amazing. Wow. So with this program, as far as everyone has their own little thing to set up, how would we just be kind of learning, doing it ourselves, and then? Coaching calls would be yeah. kind of piecing it together. It's not going to be some one-on-one. -on -one yeah, we have we have different levels okay. to it. So the the level here basically is you're buying the program. Uh -huh. Every every step of the way, there's videos. I'm doing a video that's that's walking you through the process, and then there's a workbook. And there the, in the workbook, you're taking what you learn out of the video. You're actually doing the live research and putting that into the workbook. So when you get down to where you've finished analysis, mm -hmm. you have all the information to create your ads, to create your message, to create everything that you need to create to run your marketing campaigns. And you're just you're just taking it from here and putting it down here. You know, I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen all of the templates and stuff where you know they've got copy that converts. Right? Or they say it converts. Well, it doesn't convert unless you know how to plug in the language. And this actually walks you through that. So again, that's something you know you may have bought and it didn't work. The reason it didn't work is you didn't have your messaging right. You didn't have your messaging right because you didn't do the work to figure out the, the market and the avatar and the language. So this basically anything that you've got or bought or purchased or tried and didn't work. This will probably make it work. This will make all the investments that you've had in the past actually pay off for you. Because you know, I know you've done it. I, I've done it myself. You buy stuff, you get it home, and you're like, uh, what do I do now? Yeah. You know, and, and the reality is you don't really know what your business is all about yet. Yeah. You know, you haven't done that foundational work that those ad agencies do for those big companies. You just haven't done that. And not to say that you can't do business, you can do business just fine, but you won't have predictable outcomes in your business as far as sales and scaling without doing this. You know, you'll, 
you'll always just be that that one person show you know and it'll always be based on your efforts you know if you want to automate you want to get to that level where you can have scalability and automation in your business you have to understand that messaging and you have to be able to convert that into a digital format that will replace you you know like like you had said earlier you know they have to know me they have to buy me well there's these little things now that are brand new called video cameras <laughs> and they have the ability to well, replicate I get one of those. You. <laughs> <laughs> there's four of them in this room so you know even your computer most of you guys have laptops you can do videos right on your laptops now you know, there's software and stuff where you can just sit there in front of your laptop anywhere you are and you can record a video. You know, and now you got it. You can put it up on YouTube, you can send people to that, you can use it in your websites, all of that. So you have the ability to automate yourself every step of the way. Anything that you could have done in the real world in the past, you can automate in the online world moving forward. That's how you get to freedom. You've got to have two things to get to freedom. It's time and money. The way you get your time back is through automation. The way you get your money is through conversion and scalable traffic. I'm just being devil's advocate here. Absolutely. Let's say I was a, um, a money man, what are they called? Financial manager or a okay. financial person. Right. And I only wanted to work with people that had over a million dollars to invest. Okay. And ha so those people with over a million dollars aren't going to watch something they saw on Facebook and go, oh, I'm going to sign up with her. They're going <clears> to <throat> hear from somebody else that used me to invest their money to trust that that person, you know, like my... My uncle, who's really rich, uses that woman, so I'm going to use that woman. Okay. So That's referral business. Right. So how, and, do, and how that, do I get past that where it, there has to be a deep level of trust for somebody to hire me? Yeah. You, you create that. You but create that trust and rapport through education. The more you can educate them, the more you can move them toward their desired outcome and get them to believe that they can actually achieve it their level of trust and confidence is gonna go through the roof. The higher it goes, the more desire they're gonna to have to work with you. So education-based marketing is by far the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. If you just go in and you go for the throat, and you just go for the sale and you haven't done that right. yet, you're, gonna, yeah, you're, you're out. But let me tell you this, the world is changing. The world used to operate exactly like what you said. You know, if you wanted a you know, if you needed a barber or a gardener or whatever you needed, what would you do? You'd talk to your neighbors. Say, hey, who do you use? Who do you, who's your hairstylist? You know, who, where do you buy those cool shoes? You know, they would ask their neighbors and their friends and their family. The world, like I said, is changing now. People are becoming more introverted, especially the younger generation. They don't go out and socialize anymore. They don't even like to talk to people, really. I know. They go on this little device called a, a computer or a cell phone, and guess who they ask? They don't ask their neighbors, their friends, or their family. And, and I think a lot of times the millennials, they don't trust their neighbors, friends, and family. They don't. You guys, you, I know you guys. <laughs> I know that avatar. You want third-party verification, so you won't even ask the ones you don't trust, where are you gonna go? You're gonna go to Google, you're gonna go to, you know, out to Facebook, or you know, wherever you are. And a lot of times, the biggest opportunity are the people that don't understand they have a problem, and that's where Facebook can come into play. Anthony's gonna talk about that, how you can engage them and make them aware of something they didn't even know they needed bring them into an education-based marketing system mm -hmm. and, and create that, that demand and desire. And the cool thing, he's going to go into this, I don't want to steal his thunder, but when you figure out who that person is, like let's say for the financial planner, you want those people that are in that million dollar range, you can target them like 
nobody's business on choosing <laughs> social media platforms. You could say, I only want to display this ad to people that are in the million plus income range. So it's, it's easy. How, how's that for shooting that double down for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to stay up at lunch because I'm, we literally are going to show you um, how perfect. you can build that. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost I know. So here's something I'm doing also that's even cooler that I didn't even tell you guys about. We're doing a thing called the 100,000, 100K challenge. <laughs> so all of you guys that enroll in this, the first one of you that actually used the system to create an online marketing campaign that hits 100,000 is going to take this gold bar. This is a replica of a $100,000 bill. 24 karat gold. That's the prize for the first one across the finish line. So I am I'm incentivizing this heavily. The other thing I didn't tell you about is, you know the $1,500 second payment when you hit the 100000 Use the gold bar for it. I am actually waiving that in lieu of you doing a video testimonial for me telling that you used the program, you got the results, you made a hundred thousand using it. That's worth more than fifteen hundred bucks to me. So, this program is new. It's just getting off the ground. So I'm going well out of my way to make sure it gets in enough hands that we get these things, we get these hurdles over, and we get the testimonials actually proving that it works. How much so, is that worth? Did you say? That is how much is, is that, it actually worth? Does it weigh? It is. It's four ounces of pure silver, and then it's 24 karat gold plated. So I don't know the actual weight of the plating, but it's four ounces of solid silver, 999 silver. Yeah. So times the going rate. Times the going rate, but it's also it's a collectible bill. There's not very many of those that are actually minted. So. It's worth more than the okay, cost of sure, the silver. Sure. So. You wouldn't want to melt it down. No, <laughs> you would, yeah, you, you would not get a, you would, you want to frame it. it. <laughs> yeah, this, the, the, you know, the intrinsic value of just having a, you know, a gold $100,000 bill, mm. the value of that is priceless, <laughs> really. To say, I mean, for bragging rights, to say, hey, I won the 100K challenge and this is what I got. We're also doing, for everybody, Beyond this, the first one gets this, but everyone else that comes over the line and enters that, they're going to be automatically part of my 100K club. And they're going to get to do a lot of really cool stuff with me. I mean, you know how much cool stuff I do. And I'm in the process of shopping for a very large boat right now, which is going to be part of that 100K club. All of you guys will get to come out and play with me on that boat. <laughs> If that sounds appealing, I don't know. So here's here's the other guarantees. Remember I talked about unique guarantees? I've created what I call the shark bite guarantee. If for any reason you decide, hey, this isn't for me in the first 30 days, all you have to do is just call up and say, hey, the shark bit it. And no questions asked, full money back guarantee, 100%. So that's... Can you explain what that Monday night Video? Can you jump in anytime? Yeah, that, is it a that's sequential? no. That's actually an extra thing I've added for all the people. Remember, I said I've got the Thursday calls every week. Yeah. I also added a new thing I call Monday movie nights. Yeah, and cool. Monday at seven, I'm going through sequentially every video in the series, and we literally watch the video together. Anybody that wants to participate can get in on that. And we literally watch the, the movie together. Generally, they're anywhere from like four to 10 minutes. And then we have an open Q&A about anything related to that step, that lesson. And, you know, because what I do, I record those and then I put those up in the members area. So anybody later that comes through, they watch the video, they have questions, we've probably already answered them in the Q&A. Is that then what? Yeah, that's all. That's yeah, oh, that's okay. all part of the ongoing. It's like anything you guys need. 
that was that was recommended to me from some of the members. They say, hey, you know, we would love it if we can do a Q&A. They said, would you you'd be willing to do that? And I'm like, sure, if that's what you guys need. I, I just, I do basically whatever you guys need. You know, if you tell me I need something different, I will definitely consider it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm like Cal Worthington. I'll have a lot of shit so you guys can get what you need. <laughs> so, anyway, that's it. Here's another thing, too. Is anybody that gets it today, I will give you like a 30 minute one on one private consult with me to help you get on track and figure out, you know, whatever whatever you need help with, maybe figuring out your business model or you know, whatever whatever that may be. You've got me for 30 minutes, just you and me one on one or you and your partners and me, whatever, you know, however you want to use it is is fine. So How's that sound? Group. Anybody want to get in on that? I have. I think I have. So what time is it? One thirty. Two thirty. Two thirty. You want to pass those up? Here's here's what I want you guys to do. Here's what I want you guys to do. Whether you whether you want in on it or not, at the top of the form. At least put your name, your phone number, and your email, and I will send you guys all that PDF, that outline, and invite you to the webinar where I go through that. And uh, I want everybody at least to get that. So, you know, at least, if nothing else, at least fill that top piece out so I can get that for you. Hey, how's it going? All right. Yeah, come on in. So, um, so we're going to go to lunch. Um, what time is this? Like 1.30, 2.30? Um, there's lunch spots just down the road, so we should say 3, I guess, we'll come back. Okay. That's about an hour and a half because it takes a while to go there and get food. It's going to be busy. So. All right. Okay, so. So, so back at 3, if any of you guys want to take advantage of that, just go ahead and fill it out and turn it in. If you don't want to take advantage of the actual offer, at least put your you know your contact information at the top so I can send you the, uh, the PDF. Come back at three soon? Yeah, yeah, three. Yeah, it was 30, 30, yeah, 3 o'clock. Let me see one of those. Make sure we've got the We're probably going to go to Hook Burger if there's room to sit up here. Oh, is that right in the vicinity? Okay, so, so just, okay. so one thing, one thing about the offer here, this is actually an offer for the apprentice program. That's a, like a one year high, high level program. That's not what we're offering you here. This is basically just the basic program, so it's going to be four ninety seven. So don't worry about the the pricing there. This was all I had when I ran out the door this morning. I thought had, I had the other one. So we're going to mark that off and and put that if you guys want to get in on the, on the ACT program here. Did you get one? Um, yeah. Alright, and I will be around too if you guys have questions. And yes. I'm in it. I just have got more with it. And okay. I'm determined to do so. And so, this was my name, and then I was my password. I guess I forgot. That's an important thing. Just either forget a password and have it email you. Well, I mean, well, there's a bunch of restaurants over there. How long have you? I got the uh, order of the a member. I got the site, the Hispanic site. Order of the a member. So probably like Tuesday, they should have it all installed. Are they in the bag? Ready to go. Okay, so let's come with these ones. Sorry, guys. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony and his nephew. They uh, they came up they actually stayed at my house last night. I thought you guys should come up. You know, the night before. Yeah, yeah, stay or yeah. yeah. How's your day? Good, yeah, we're just, just doing a lunch break here. Yeah, yeah I went, I went through the uh, went through the program, the first steps. And then after lunch, we're going to be traffic. Let's go eat more. Okay, I'm getting this. Good. Uh, do you think we're have lunch? No. Sure, we can do that. you want to go to Hook That's a good one. Where is this? It's right, right over there where they're all the other restaurants. Oh, okay. Is that a walk or a drive? Oh, I'd rather drive. You can walk there, but... It's always changing. Why? Yeah. 
It's a long walk. I don't know how you do it. It's kind of Okay. Well, I have a sheet. I'll give it to you. I just don't know where they are. Yeah. You guys want to go to Hook Parker? Yeah. Okay. Is that all right, Susan? I'm right here. Oh, is that okay? I'm going to give you the Bible here. I'm going to give you the Bible here. I'm going to give you the Bible here. Oh, okay. I got the email addresses. I need to get the emails out. They just charged me again on the 13th. Oh, wait, so I'm It's um, next year on the 13th. It should be in there. Next year. Next month. Okay. Let's do this after. I think they want to walk the room. Oh, okay. Okay. So well, please don't be, please let me I'm get me on. Before, before the end of the day, yeah. I will get you connected. Uh, it's such a pain. I want to <laughs> listen to it, and then I turn it on, and then it's like I will make sure you are these. definitely connected. <laughs> but I think they want to walk this up. Oh. Yes. God, I hate computer. <laughs>